around the whole world. <laughs> Now, uh, this, um, who was that lady I saw you with? Uh, saw you with? Uh, you can't play a um, character named Orlov, and you always said uh, you're a great dialectician, and uh, I loved it on um, F Troop when you would come on as Aganoff, uh, Aganoff, the uh, Russian, your Russian cousin. Then you'd be the Spanish guy, then you'd be the Irish guy, and uh, the German one. And uh, how did the dialects come about? The dialects came about because when I was quite quite a young boy, uh, whenever a boat landed in New York City, people got off that boat with their dialect pretty much intact. And my mother ran a moving house for starving actors. She didn't plan it that way, but that's the way it turned out. <laughs> and a lot of them, a lot of them came over from Russia, some from, from Germany, and so, we had a, a Japanese gentleman, Mr. Tanaka, and he said one day that there will be war between Japan and the United States. We think that one is being a war. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> well, two years I spent schlepping around in the South Pacific. <laughs> two years! looking for Hirohito's boys. Today he's my landlord. <laughs> 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 Can you give a favorite episode of that? I like them all, but I, uh, I always like to do, I like to do my Carson from, uh, from Chihuahua, Mexico, because I was brought up in New York, in Spanish Harlem, and so the dialect come easy to me. Can I just tell you this, this one story about oh, Spanish okay. Harlem? It was an early Monday morning, early Monday morning, and this young Spanish person put these two fingers to his eyes, and he was crying, and he says to his mother, Mama, no quiero ir a la escuela hoy. Con la escuela yo se, se ya acabó, se ya acabó. It's murder without the subtitles, ain't it? <laughs> it he, wait, 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 he says, he says, I don't want to go to school today. I don't like the kids and I don't like the teachers. His mother said to him, Jesus, don't you give me that crap. You go to school today. You're 31 years old and you're the principal. <laughs> Start, you know, because I was thrown in with these people early in the uh, in the early in the late thirties, and so I picked up on the dialects. I was very lucky that I did. Mm -hmm. and oh, no, no, no. <laughs> now uh, I'll let you know when. <laughs> Charlie the Charlie the drunk, part fifty-four. That was a recurring role that you had. I played a, I played a guy who who could talk himself into, into drinking. He was behind the bars and he said, I'll never forget, he went to the Atlantic bar and they gave him one and then they gave him another and then finally I talked myself into a stupor and when they came in and they saw me drunk, they said, who gave it to him? How did he get it? I said, mean, chief, you ain't gonna believe this. He talked himself into it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. Burns, did you do any other um, episodic television um, uh, in addition to 77? Oh my god, yeah, tons of stuff. Uh, I think they've got uh, an Alfred Hitchcock here tomorrow at 4. Probably, yeah. the final escape. Yeah, I did that. Oh uh, yeah, let's see. Well, I, when I was at Warner Brothers, we did all the, uh, you know, Maverick and Cheyenne, all those shows. And uh, when I left Warner Brothers, I went over to Europe and did some Italian westerns over there. But uh, came back about a year later, and yeah, I did a lot. I did, you know, Quincy and just all of them, probably you know, about 50 of them, all, all kinds of shows there. And, uh, you know, and in 1978, I, I got Grease. I got lucky with that because that's still on. And uh, I got, you know, sort of the younger crowd knows me from Vince Fontaine, where the uh, people that, you know, probably here today, they remember me from 77 Sunset Strip. And, 
I've been in actually about 20 features, but I don't think I, we ever worked together actually. But uh, I've been about 20, 20 films, <laughs> lots of TV and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Do you have a favorite memory of? Um, did you ever, uh, when you did 77 or any of the other shows, did you ever get to work with somebody that you grew up seeing in the movies or uh, that you just or uh, to? And, uh, well, let's see. I guess Linda Donnell came and did us again uh, an episode and. Uh, she was used to making movies over at Fox, and uh, she couldn't get them out of the dressing room. You know, she was doing her hair and doing the makeup, and they got pretty. She didn't. She, I think it was probably her first television show. She didn't know how quick we worked, and, but so. And then, of course, uh, Sammy Davis Jr. is one of my favorite episodes called uh, "The Gang's All Here." He was doing a show in Las Vegas, and uh, he would uh, finish his show about two o'clock in the morning. And he'd get into a limousine and they'd drive to Warner Brothers and he'd sleep in the back of the limo for four or five hours for the drive and he'd be up on the set, you know, at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning with his cigarette in one hand and his uh, uh, rum and coke in the other, you know, always, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So it was great to work with him and, uh, you know, one of the great things is like, uh, being an actor, I mean, I, I got to meet and become friends with all my idols as a kid, like Robert Mitchum and Kirk Douglas and Burt Lancaster. I actually, you know, Kirk used to pal out with Kirk. I guess one of the biggest thrills I had, I did a movie in um, the former Yugoslavia called The Secret Invasion with uh, Stuart Granger and Mickey Rooney. And Kirk uh, called me at the house once and he said, Eddie, he said, I've got a copy of your movie there and I'm going to screen it tonight. Why don't you, and at the time I was married, you Asa come over to the house, we'll have some dinner, and we'll watch the movie. Like, geez, can you imagine? Here I am going over to Kirk's house, and he had the um, he had a private screening room. And as you walked out to his uh, pool and his tennis court, he had all these uh, handprints. He did a thing like uh, Grumman's Chinese Theater. Every time he had an actor, a friend of come over, you, Brenner, or somebody to you know, get out some cement, they you know, do the hands and all that. Anyway, we went into the screening room, and uh, we watched the movie. Pretty good movie, yeah? a lot of action, all that stuff. And uh, you know, and, and when the movie came down, you know, yeah, pretty good performance, pretty good performance already, you know. So that was good. I, I think, you know, one of the best things about becoming an actor for me is like I got to meet and become friends with a lot of these stars that I, you know, when I sitting in the movie theater, I never went to school. I used to cut class all the time growing up in New York. I hated school, you know, like your principal guy. And uh, <laughs> anyway. My mother used to give me a dollar, and I'd go to the Paramount Theater or the Capitol. You know all those theaters there, and they'd show uh, I don't know Bob Mitch, Robert Mitchum and uh, I don't know what uh, his kind of woman, and uh, Bob would come out after every episode, after every screening, and do a little ten or fifteen minutes, sing a song, get around a little bit. I used to sit there all day, and you know, and here I am, Robert Mitchum, and I'd go up to the Capitol and see Burt Lancaster and one of his movies doing a. A show on on stage with Nick Cravat. They do a high wire thing, and they he climb up a pole and do levitate off the pole. And uh, you know, I mean, this was like amazing. Then all of a sudden, I go to Hollywood, and I sort of become, I guess, pretty well known, a little famous. And uh, I start meeting these guys, and it's like, wow, you know, a pretty big thrill, really thrilling. You know, it's unbelievable. And Robert Mitchum's brother John was a regular on F Troop. Did he play? Yeah, yeah, was John Mitchum? Yeah, but he, John was quite a storyteller. He could tell a lot of stories. You know. Pretty good guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, um, who's Hoppemuller, the um, the German the soldier on the F troop, uh, Robert, uh, John, um, Jim Mitchum. Yes, I think you're right. And then he was a balladeer in a very odd episode, the episode called "The Day They Shot Agar," in which you were in front of a firing squad. Do you remember that episode? <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it turns out. Uh, you did not kill uh, Forrest Tucker's character, Morgan yeah, O'Rourke. Yeah, yeah. uh, it came out at the end before they were about to shoot you. <laughs>